Do you ever feel like you're having the same conversation over and over with the staff of your training gym, but you don't seem to be getting any different results? In this video, I'm gonna show you what's probably going wrong and exactly how to fix it. My name is Mark Fisher. If you like today's video, I'd love for you to head to businessfunicorns.com where you can find out more about how we help training gym owners create more income, more impact, and more freedom. As the saying goes, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. Who said that saying? I don't know. On the internet, everyone says everything. It might have been after all. Joe Mama! <laughs> yep. I'm done with this job. The takeaway here is a valuable one. If you're not getting different results, it, there's a chance that unfortunately, even though it doesn't feel that way to you, you are doing the same thing over and over again. So I often call this Groundhog's Day conversations when you're stuck in management Groundhog Day. What would you do if you were stuck in one place? You see, if we want our employees to register that the conversation is escalating, we have to be very clear with how we're escalating. And that requires using different words and making it clear through a number of ways that we're not having the same conversation over and over again. Didn't we do this yesterday? I don't know what you mean. Today, we're gonna to focus on a particular tool in crucial accountability for making sure we're escalating these types of chats. And it goes by the acronym CPR. So the first one is just about the content. It's like you're running late for class. The second one, P stands for pattern. So content, then pattern. Hey, Billy Bob, I noticed you were running late for class again. Now it's not so much about the issue of Billy Bob running late, that's not ideal. This is now a pattern. Right, because the reality is if someone on your team messes up something once, well, we all get a mulligan here and there. It's pot, anybody can mess things up. But as soon as things move to a pattern, we're gonna now run into issues. The third letter, CPR, content, pattern, relationship. We're now talking about how that is impacting the relationship, your ability to trust this individual, how you feel about your working relationships. Oh. Rita, this is Ned Ryerson. He's my new insurance agent. I'll say. <laughs> The things that hurt trust over time in a relationship with a staff member is lots of very small violations of trust. This is the dreaded death by a thousand cuts. So if you are not meticulously having this conversation every time, if you're not also, another pro tip for you, keeping track of it in a document, not as a, I got you, or you're like, <laughs> you're like crazy Santa Claus, like I got a list. I'm checking it twice, naughty employee. If someone is messing up a thing here and there, maybe every other week and you're never addressing it. It's three, nuts. two, one. <laughs> it's gonna start to feel bigger and bigger to you. And then when you have this conversation with the individual, you can't even be specific about the behaviors along the way. Take a deep breath. You feel okay? Really? Okay, all right. And you might correctly feel like, oh, I'm getting so frustrated about this, but the reality is you weren't having the content conversation along the way. You weren't able to really establish the pattern based on feedbacks and behavior. So for the employee to their defense, sometimes what happens is they didn't, they were maybe oblivious about these things. They didn't know they were issues perhaps for you as their leader. And now you're so frustrated. So by the time you have the chat, there's a lot more emotional energy in this that didn't need to be there. <laughs> Don't mess with me, poor chap. When the emotion feels, understandably, wildly disproportionate to the offense because you weren't having those conversations all the time. The other issue is you have this conversation over and over and it's nice, and then you blow up on them. And remember, you might feel like it's escalating, but it's very important that they understand it's different. So to that end, I wanna give you another framework that you can use here. So we have CPR, right? And this refers to the words, what are you saying? It's about the content, it's about the pattern, now it's about our relationship. This other framework, which comes from a great book called Good Authority by a gentleman named Jonathan Raymond, love this book, gives some ideas for how we can escalate that with how the conversation is delivered and not just the words. So in this framework, and you can marry this with CPR, perhaps the content is what could be called the mention, the mentioning in the hall. Like, hey, Billy Bob, not a big deal. I know it's class, you were, you were in, the, in the classroom, but I noticed it started about 90 seconds late. It's not the end of the world, 90 seconds late, not a big deal, but you do want to have that mention because it might start to escalate. It's why it's so important you don't let any standard violation go without you saying something, right? So you have to show a lot of discipline here as the leader. So then when you're on to pattern, now you're into the what I call go for a walk and sit down. So now for this one, it's like, hey, Billy Bob, do you have a second? Can, can we go for a walk? Come here, I want to talk to you about something, right? And now they feel it's heavier, right? So you're breaking the pattern, you're moving to a different space. Go ahead, why don't you sit down, Billy Bob? Cool, how's your day gone? 
Great, so I want to talk about a pattern I've been seeing. Now you might recall I had mentioned that you were started your class a little bit late and I couldn't help but noticing I saw the same thing happening again today. And what's making me concerned here is now it feels like this is maybe a little bit of a pattern. So now we're marrying not only the change of what you're saying, but how you're saying it, right? We've taken Billy Bob to a different place. We've sat down. It should feel more formal. And then once you're on to the third one, well, now we're on to the conversation about the relationship, the impact. So this one I call the schedule in an office serious meeting. So this one will feel very different. This one you probably want to communicate with Billy Bob in advance. Your tone should be more formal here. This probably wants to send an email in advance. Hey, Billy Bob, I'd love to have a conversation about you with some of the patterns I'm noticing. And then again, this one's going to be in an office. The door is closed. And understand, please, please hear me. I'm not suggesting that you attempt to be manipulative or you put on a show, but the reality is to the defense of your employees, sometimes they it just doesn't feel that different to them. So if you don't really make it clear with both the words and the way your feedback is delivered, you're not properly escalating. Phil Connors, I thought it was you. Ned Ryerson. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I have missed you so much. So you have a responsibility as their leader, as somebody that they look to for their livelihood to make it clear if their job is being threatened. I hope you find this framework valuable and maybe just keep this on your radar for the next time you find yourself feeling like you keep having the same conversation, you're not seeing different results. As always, as leaders, we wanna be asking ourselves, we wanna get curious and ask, why isn't this behavior changing? What could I be doing differently? And I hope that you find the system and framework useful to get better results faster. And then Groundhog Day will just be an amazing movie with Bill Bill Murray, and not your life. Do you ever have deja vu, Mrs. Lancaster? I don't think so, but I could check with the kitchen. No, that's okay, thank you. All right, friends, that's all for today's video. As always, thank you so much for watching our videos. I put my whole heart and soul into these. It would mean so much to me if you know another gym owner or somebody that has a fitness business you think would benefit from these tips and tricks. It means so much to me if you share and give that subscribe button a smash. My name is Mark Fisher. And I will catch you next time where I will share with you more actionable tips, psychological frameworks, and philosophy.